Hi there. When COVID-19 began to spread in Sri Lanka in late March, I decided to make a photographic diary of the pandemic. But I soon found out that there are hardly any dramatic pictures. It's not like a war or not even like the tsunami which we experienced in 2004. If you look at all the photos from around the world taken of the pandemic so far, you'll find that they are mostly people with masks or hospitals and again people with masks, hungry people, people in the streets, uh, people getting their temperatures checked. There's nothing really dramatic. There are graves, graveyards, grave diggers. Soon you reach a saturation point. So how do you go about photographing the pandemic? This was my challenge. Some of these photographs were published in a newspaper, but this was not a newspaper assignment. I am a journalist and I decided to go around as a citizen, photographing a catalytic event. I used an old camera, a Nikon D90 with just one lens, a short zoom. And the reason was that I was very often nervous. I could move about during lockdown because I had a media identity card, but even so, walking into a city with empty streets, it's uncanny. Suddenly you feel that you mean there is a virus hunting you down. Unseen force is worse than being under sniper fire or being in a civil war. This was something totally, totally new and strange, bizarre and frightening. Lockdown came to Sri Lanka in, on the 27th of March, it was a Friday, and I started photographing in the week before. It was hectic with people panicking, very uncertain of the future. And this first photograph of a parked three-wheeler, these are the most common taxis in Sri Lanka, with one driver sitting inside and another leaning against the wall, shows a mood of uncertainty. Next, I photographed this crowd outside a supermarket. There's no perfect way of photographing a queue. It's a very difficult and boring subject. But in this first photograph, you will see there's a woman leaning towards the left. And in the center, there's a man looking furiously at his phone. There's a dramatic tension between these. They offer characterization and variety to what would otherwise be a very ordinary picture with no compositional elements. The second photograph of the same queue shows people of different walks of life, but they all they are showing things. Their faces, though covered, show fear and uncertainty. You can see it in their body language. In this third photograph, again of the same queue, uh, you find this young woman, very elegant young woman with an umbrella. She has her back turned towards and that provides a contrast to the uh, general composition. These three wheel are loaded with supplies with a man squeezed in at the top. It's not normally permitted by the police in traffic, but these were not ordinary days. Then there is this queue again at a pumping station. People are queuing up to buy kerosene, the cooking oil. And again, again we have a design element in the diagonal line, which provides an element of interest to the picture. And that diagonal line is topped by a man in the red t-shirt, by his uh, body which is turning towards the right. Again, a line of people waiting to buy gas. Again, no obvious design element. You could have found one perhaps by walking around, but I was nervous. This tension gets into you. I've been living with a civil war. The country is now at peace. There is no war anymore. But for the better part of my life, there was a civil war in this country for over 30 years and I lived with that. And I moved, uh, worked in some of those areas during the war as a journalist. But um, you never get used to it. I don't like being under any kind of fire. And this was also being like that. You felt a palpable, palpable tension around you. I'm sure there are people who can handle that better. They are the people who be go on and become uh, combat photographers or conflict photographers. I like to do work in a more peaceful environment. These photographs were taken the day lockdown or curfew as it's called here was declared in uh, Colombo and island wide as lockdown 
uh, was due at 6 o'clock and this was around 5.15 to 5.30. I saw this mother and daughter walking their dog in front of the town hall of Colombo and I thought that would make a fantastic picture. Under the circumstances, people are panicking, uh, hurrying home and these people are taking it very calmly, walking their dog and that's just wonderful. So I asked her, whether, I asked the mother whether I could take a photograph and she agreed the second taken from a lower angle is better. Then I saw this Chinese couple hurrying home with their groceries. They probably could not find a taxi at that moment. The streets were nearly empty. Then there were these three young French tourists from the way they were sitting on the pavement in front of an airline office, Qatar Airways. I knew that they were stranded. So I asked them what was wrong and they told me that they were waiting for a taxi. They, the driver couldn't find them because they didn't speak English, not much, and the driver couldn't understand them. Uh, I speak French, so I managed to communicate to the driver where they were and the driver was there about 15 minutes before curfew time and they were very happy. My photography probably was limited by the fact that I walked I went with one lens. Now I normally, for portraits, I normally prefer uh, manual lens, standard lens. Uh, I can compose at leisure, but there was so much tension in me that I just used the AF mode on my uh, short zoom. So you see the photographs with limitations, but eventually I ended up with a picture story, a body of work that will tell at least part of the story of this terrible time. Now this queue in front of a small grocery shop has another interesting uh, design element. You notice that the two figures, the two women to the left, they are looking towards the left while the young man at the center, he is turned towards the right. Now this is a kind of design element that you will find in classical painting. Look carefully at the paintings of Titian, Raphael, um, Michelangelo and you will find design elements except that in these photographs you can't uh, this, is, this is not a post situation these people are not models they are people in the queue waiting to buy things so that's your luck you see that design element you snap it of course the picture can be made stronger if you eliminate the the people towards the right from the lamp post uh, onwards then it will be a tighter composition so this is like the calm after the storm, the machinery stopped, I don't know why, they'll probably start again and okay. So back to our a composite picture of the pandemic and there were these pigeons uh, at the town center and they were in for a hard time because they inhabit a Buddhist temple and it was closed during the pandemic and uh, normally they get fed. But now it was a difficult situation. So you see these two young men from a nearby supermarket coming and feeding them. So they were kept alive. They were kept alive during the pandemic by well-wishers of this kind. And I found this uh, cleaning woman. So all this work went on during the pandemic, during the lockdown, uh, nothing broke down. And she looked very uh, hearty and cheerful, given the general gloomy picture. And as I said, portraits are very important in this kind of composite picture of a difficult and bleak situation. These are portraits of several beggars I saw in the streets. I think they are important because they are the people who are the hardest hit by the pandemic. This man has been in this area for so long. He's deaf mute and he's always cheerful. And I don't think he still heard of the coronavirus epidemic because he's never worn a mask and it has not affected him at all. He's always cheerful and he rarely goes hungry. This man is a former hospital employee. He's crippled by a serious accident and he begs near a supermarket. This man is also an old timer in the wheelchair. He's been begging for so long. He can no longer move by himself because he's, um, the peddling arm no longer works, but he has a regulation to help him all these people survived. It's amazing resilience. None of them starved to death. The woman in the white t-shirt, 
She said she's not a beggar. She said she has three children to feed. And uh, luckily the light was good. It was late afternoon and you can see the background colors. But you can see the, her face, though it's masked, the underlying fears, the misery, it speaks for the pandemic. That face speaks for the pandemic. Outside this uh, girl's school, an empty street without a single vehicle, normally you find the road full of parked vehicles. Uh, I saw the billboard for a musical concert that has been cancelled. Uh, I think it's a very interesting uh, composition because there are diagonal lines and all the grid lines that bisect each other. The intersecting lines, the grids, the verticals, the horizontals, they all make for a very strong composition. The colors are also very pleasing. The way they blend the bright and warm colors of the billboard stand out against the cobalt blue and gray mixture of the background. But then there was this stray cat which comes to feed. It was very old and emaciated, all skinny. And at first it used to run away, but then it got used to me. And now one day I found it snug sitting on my scooter. And that gave me a wonderful picture. This is the glove that I use to feed all the cats and dogs, to mix the food. And it uh, just went into tatters during the lockdown. And I couldn't find a replacement. So I decided that it should be part of this story. And I photographed it uh, at several exposure levels, underexposure, normal, a little bit over. And I finally settled for the underexposure because it has a very, really solid, the form. The form strikes you at once, it looks abstract, and it's, it's really solid, it's much more substantial than the actual glove. This is how you approach a subject and this is what makes photography really an art form. When you look at the object with your own eyes and you, when you photograph it, you see something different. You see that uh, the form has shifted, changed, there are light and dark, you know, chiaroscuro effects that you haven't noticed before and it assumes a life on its own.